<laughs> Hello everyone, welcome back. I'm testing out this new uh, match trigger that I put in this Palmetto. So this rifle is a, um, it's a the, the, the top is a 223 Wild. Uh, I already did a video on this. It's a 18-inch uh, barrel, um, and the bottom is also Palmetto. So the rifle was the total rifle was about $500. Uh, I have hit a half-inch group um at 100 yards um you know twice okay so i've shot it a bunch of times i mean i i, I i'm getting one inch pretty routinely i'm getting a three quarter inch every now and then um the half inch i've only been able to hit twice at 100 yards so i said hey let's throw in the match straight trigger uh and see if we can improve that so uh now the thing is we're at 200 yards now okay uh we're shooting 200 yards uh so ideally we'd have under the best conditions, we'd be hitting a one-inch group, um, which would be a half MOA. All right, so let's take a let's take a. I got five shots in the mag, five rounds in the magazine. Now it is getting dark. Okay, it is uh, starting to get a little bit dark here. So, uh, looking through the scope, you see a lot less. Once the sun starts going down a little bit, uh, you know, first of all, the, the camera has automatically switched to night mode. So what you guys are seeing is actually a little bit brighter than what it actually is. And then when you're looking through the scope, it looks even darker. So let's see what we can get at 200 yards. So it's kind of cool when, it, when it's getting dark like this. Um, you know, I uh, I looked to the side to see, check my ejection port to see if it was empty. Couldn't see anything. I had to actually put my finger in there to make sure that my ejection port was open and there's nothing in the chamber. So it's kind of funny how, um, you know, you have to make do when it starts getting dark. Because like I said, it is a little bit darker than what you guys are uh, seeing in the camera. Let's cover so for me, like, um, this is the uh, the brash tactical sling. This is a fast loop strip sling. Really practical. I mean, for me, it's just a practical thing as I'm moving around in the woods, um, being able to sling the rifle behind me. And then basically I could pull it here and, and really tighten it up. So as I'm moving up and down the range, um, you know, things not moving all over the place, hitting tree branches and stuff like that. And I can really tighten it up pretty good. I've actually uh, bought, I have a couple of these from Brash Tactical. They're it's like twenty five dollars if you get the hardware. I've got so much hardware. I just get the the the, the, the sling itself, and then I I uh, put the hardware on myself because I got so much of it. So it usually costs me about sixteen dollars. So I have, I have a sandbag here. Um, so this is really you know bagging the back of the gun is is really helps you stabilize it. So you use the bipod in the front, and uh, basically it's a, it's a sock that I fill with sand. So uh, this is pretty comfortable for me to walk because remember, I also got to carry the tripod and the camera that you guys are on. So, you know, I need one hand completely free. So having the rifle on my back is really convenient. Let's, uh, let's go take a look and see how we did. We took five shots. Wow, it's really getting dark in there. So as I'm moving through this more open area, it's actually a little bit more lit than the area that I was shooting from. So it's like it's you know it's basically it's just before it gets too dark to 
be able to really see anything. So let's see, let's pull this out. Let's see what kind of hits we got. I got, I got really close out so I can see. Where'd they go? Oh, they dropped all the way down here. Oh, wow. So I was at 200 yards. I have my Chevron here. And it dropped all the way down here. Ignore the circles. That's from earlier. So it, it's... Uh, yeah, yeah, I had my Chevron up here, whoop, up there, right? And I mean, this, yeah, so basically I was supposed to put the legs over where I wanted it. I wasn't sure exactly how it was going to work out, so I just put my tip there, and they landed here. So ignore these circles. That's from earlier. Um, so we got one here, two, three, four, five. Uh, so the widest one is from there to there. Let's get the tape measure out. All right, so that's that's the from there to there are the widest ones. So that's a total of three and a quarter inches at 200 yards in low light conditions. And then that one over there looks like I completely threw it because I got a nice cluster over here. These four right here, one, two, three, four. So it looks like I got an inch, uh, an inch and a half cluster, four shot cluster. Okay, and that one was just like way off over there. So that one I just screwed up, I think. So, so the, basically a three quarter M away if you discount that that screw up over there. Um, so yeah, interesting. I, I got to do this obviously in in oh, more daylight because it's like you're getting really dark now. Uh, but it's interesting to just. Do this at night, you know, or when it's got really low, and see what you could do. Because when I was looking at this, even with the 10x magnification, I could barely see that bullseye. I had a real hard time holding on this because um, I, I couldn't see it. So I was like, you know, I, I was kind of guessing exactly, but I could see it, but I couldn't exactly tell where the edge was. So I had to kind of guess where the tip met the edge, and that's a that's a decent group, right, from there to there. Um, even with the screw up, it's still a decent group. And then if you look at the, just the four shots, that's really nice. So that's the, that's the most interesting part of today's shooting. Talk to you all soon.